Hey guys, welcome back to PlayStation Live from E3. We're broadcasting uh, through Thursday. Lots of game demos, interviews, lots of good stuff coming. But so much. So much coming. So much stuff. Yeah. But right now, I want to talk about Days Gone. So welcome, uh, John, and uh, whoever you are. What's your name again? Jeff, I forgot. Jeff, Jeff Ross. Jeff, sorry John about that. Jeff. I think I did the same thing last year, didn't I? I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sid. I'm a mess. I'm a disaster up here. All right, look. Right Days Gone. Right, it's right there. <laughs> I have no excuse, do I? Look, Days Gone. <laughs> Big, big presence in last night's PlayStation E3 showcase. Uh, really, really cool sequence there. I mean, it was creepy. It was violent. Very violent. Yeah. Uh, it showed a lot of sort of situational kind of, uh, uh, you know, using the, the environment and, yeah. and, and the freakers that we see kind of to, right. to, to, to the advantage of the player. Yeah. So tell me what, 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 what went into that. Well, so the biggest thing that we really wanted to do this year was yeah sort of show a more intimate part of Deacon's life. Mm -hmm. so last Great. year, Wheat was the Horde, which is hundreds and hundreds of Freakers, all sort of massed together, and you saw how Deacon had to struggle to just stay alive. And this year, we wanted to show off more of the open world and this thing that we're calling our dynamic open world systems. And what that really means is you can use the Freakers themselves against other other enemies, like the right. Marauders that you see on the on the Media Showcase demo last night. Right. Yeah. Know, Actually, I have a question about yeah. the Freakers, because, uh, you know, with, with other games, survival games, you know, like, like this, for instance, The Last of Us, uh, the clickers had this thing where they couldn't see you, but they could hear you. What is it that triggers the Freakers? Oh, yeah. Well, That's so, good. it's an interesting question, and for anybody who gets a chance to see our uh, alternate demo that we're demonstrating in the theater today, or online when it gets posted, is that time, the time of day, kind of drives the density of the freakers and the humans when they're out, but, but also the weather. So when it's snowing, it's going to kind of blind everybody at a distance. When it's raining, it's going to dampen the sound. So when the player learns these, he's going to be able to use that kind of context as one of, he's going to play that as part of his strategy for how he approaches any, any encounter. Gotcha. But definitely sound, right? Because like you saw in the Media Showcase demo, uh, Deacon, you know, put down this bear trap and then kind of snuck off. Right. Um, and in our alternate path demo, he doesn't do that. So he actually kind of goes around and watches what happens when this marauder goes into the bear trap. And you hear this gunshot on the media showcase demo. If you look at our alternate uh, path footage, you'll see um, that one of the marauders actually shoots the other marauder in the head because he's making too much noise. Oh wow! Right. So yeah. So it's a pretty harsh. It's a pretty harsh world. But that sound traveled, and sound is like is something that can be really, really dangerous. Gotcha. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, I did notice once the bear trap was down and the guy stepped in it, you saw the freakers running. Yeah. It's like they heard it screaming. You heard them screaming. Yeah, this is uh, looking good. Um, I haven't seen, I didn't see all of this footage. Uh, I was kind of, I was kind of a little distracted last night during the showcase. But uh, one of the things I really like about this game um, is, is it's, you know, we see a lot of open world games out there. It's certainly like a popular genre. But right. this one, it, it, the, the, the feel of it is different. It's, it feels more improvisational. Uh, I think it's the word I'm going for. Yeah. Absolutely, our crafting system, I mean, it's really inspired by, you know, kind of the do-it-yourself mentality where, yeah. you know, we all feel thrilled when we make a repair to our car or our house with duct tape and a couple of loose screws and we feel really good about it. That, that's Deacon, you know, he's making use of everything he can find in the environment and they have to scavenge and search for things and employ him in really clever ways. That and, he has, and he has to do he, it. He has to do it so, to survive. So and like you, you see right here, this. this is the same clothesline that Deacon ran into. And in this demo, the runners aren't chasing him so, so basically, he has the opportunity to see the the ambush before it happens. Goes around it, comes up behind them, and takes those guys out from behind. Right. So, you know, so that's you know to yeah. your point. And then he, and he strangles them with their own clothesline too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So he makes use of the whole buffalo. In and this it's game. a dynamic event that can happen. You can be out in right. the world doing a job or a mission, and then suddenly right. you've got marauders that are ambushing you on the highway. And it's a dynamic event. There's no way to predict when it's going to happen. You just got to pay attention. Well, is, there, is there more than just like a clothesline in the middle? Is there, do they oh, find yeah. more ways to ambush you? Yeah, it's, exactly. a it's a dangerous world. And it's something oh, where, goodness. you know, the, the horde is dangerous. Freakers are dangerous. But so too are humans because they're cunning and clever. And they're, they too are using everything they can, they can find to employ against their enemies. And, and uh, let's just say a clothesline is one of many things. We'll get into it at a later date. OK, OK. Now tell me a little bit about maybe a little bit of the backstory about why these freakers are being hung up like this. I'm just is that like a defense mechanism? Is it Yeah, a... absolutely. Yeah, so what they do is they we call it the meat wall. And oh. what they'll do is like in this case they have a bear trap under this dead freaker corpse. And what they'll do is they'll put a trap under it and then as other freakers are attracted to the meat, oh. they're all they're all hungry all the time. That's what happens evidently if you become a freaker. Um, but they, but they hang up the meat walls again. It's kind of like a wall to protect the encampment. So you can always tell when you're coming close to a marauder camp 
because you'll run into these kinds of traps. Yeah, they have all kinds of defenses too. I mean, the first thing Deacon did was trip over that little thing in the, in the, the, the tent cans. And that's what drew the first guy out, which is why he'd think on his toes, scramble for a bush, and then wait, and then kill the guy when he came by. Right. And it, again, in, in the alternate path, path that we're showing, it's something where if, if the players are thoughtful and if they take time, they don't just rush into things, they're going to be able to employ a, a different analysis yeah. of the train. They're going to be able to look for these things and see them. And uh, that's how he sees a clothesline. And when the players are careful and cautious and assume the world's dangerous, they can turn the tables on the bad guys using their same, the same tools that they're using against the player against them. Yeah, so like what you're seeing now is, is part of the alternate path. Changed up the time of day, changed up the weather. Okay, now, I was going to say, I didn't remember cold, this on the show. Exactly, yeah. because it's colder okay, now, more beautiful. freakers are coming out, so freakers are ah. stronger when it's cold out. So you oh, interesting. You really got to be careful when it's snowing. Also, yeah. the bike handles differently. It's like if you'd seen the earlier part oh. when Deacon's trying to ride his bike through the snow, it's very, very different. Oh, this is really cool. I didn't, I didn't realize. Interesting. So here's your meat wall, right? Oh. The meat, meat wall, wall there. Yeah. That, that's, that seems like a pretty smart move, if I'm yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, look at this, a beautiful looking game too. And I know you guys are, are digging into the PS4 Pro as well as you make this title. This is one that's been shown off a number of times. Right. I know you have HDR. Tell me a little bit about uh, like working with PS4 Pro as you develop the game. Well, the biggest, the biggest thing is just the resolution. So yeah. dynamic 4K, and yeah. if you get a chance to see this thing on a 4K monitor and HDR. Oh yeah. You know, and HDR is honestly, to me, the most impressive thing because it really sort of simulates what the human eye can see the gamut of colors is just amazing. So watching it in 4K HDR is is something you have to do. It, it's beautiful enough without 4K. And, True, and then right? you add that to the mix and it's just it's mind blowing. Yeah. Right, right. You know, one thing that stands out to me about Days Gone, you know, uh, amongst the other undead games out there is that you can get so many zombies on the screen in this thing, or freakers I, <laughs> on the screen at once. Um, so. Can you tell us a little bit about how you guys went about making that happen and just getting so many freakers on the screen at one time? Was that a technical feat for you guys? Oh, absolutely. So we have a really, really talented team. Um, some of our, our engineers and artists and designers and audio and everything. But we, I think we have like, you know, we have this one engineer that's literally been, at, I've been at Sony Ben for 20 years. Um, Chris has been there like 26 years. Wow. Right. And this other engineer has been there like 20, you know, 23 years or something. And he does all of our physics. And he, you know, he really, really, really worked hard to make sure that we could have as, you know, as many freakers on the screen as we can. And, and you know, and last year's demo was no joke. Right. We had 300 active on screen at once. Wow. And, you know, the overall horde for the sawmill, we were managing something like, how many did you say it was? Killed a thousand. It was a thousand yeah. freakers. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, and then man. 300 more showed up at the end too. So. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty impressive. So what we're do, even impressed by it. What do you do when you're confronted by that many freakers in, in, in this game? I mean, I saw, we saw last year's demo. I'm not sure that ended so well. Didn't that seemed well. like a pretty desperate yeah, ending. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? What's a, what's, what could be an effective technique well, for getting out of that? Weaponize them, like we saw we in the demo. Them, right? right where, yeah. you know, so that, that wasn't actually a horde. It was a swarm, a smaller okay. horde. One in, t in th this E3's demo. Well. Yeah, in this, in this year's E3 right. demo. So it's something where you can even weaponize the, the larger horde as well. But it's something where, yeah, it's a threat to you. But if you're smart and you don't just rush into everything, you can stop and contemplate how you can utilize yeah. every weapon and every enemy and the environment against each other as part of your tool set. And I, and I think the short answer is until you have progressed, because this, you know, it's like taking on a swarm is something you can probably do pretty early in the game. Yeah. The horde encounters are probably later in the game. Yeah. And you just you just do what Deacon did last yeah. year. You the, the shortest your answer is yeah. run. When you run, run, yeah. run. Get, get up to a tall place. That won't <laughs> save you, but it might buy you a few seconds. Yep. Well, you saw in the demo, you saw in the demo at the showcase that they had, the Deacon looks over this fence and he sees a horde down there. Right. Probably that's not the smartest thing to do would be to run down there yeah. and, you know, and mess with them. You just don't right. want to do that. Yeah. Speaking of hopeless endings, uh, there was a freaked out bear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to go into that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what other types of creatures are we going to see in that state? Well, we seen last year. We saw the horde. Right. We saw swarmers. We saw the newts, which are adolescents when they were infected. Um, we saw regular wolves. Right. This year we're showing the rager bear. That's what we call it. Is the rager, rager bear. Rager. We saw runners. So runners are infected wolves. Ooh, and ah. Those are the ones that you know Deacon kind of ran across. You know, then gnawing on somebody's corpse, and then one of them chased him. And the thing about runners is, they can outrun your bike. And yes. if they catch up to you, they will knock you from your bike. So it's a, another example of dynamic events that happen in the world that make the world dangerous all the time. Wow, such a cool game you guys are making. It's really inspired. I think it's got a lot of, a lot of cool mechanics to it. Uh, you know, and it's, again, it's just kind of a fresh take on the open world genre. So what would you say you're most proud of uh, as you work on the title? Yeah. Oh, uh, myself, I, I, I'm most proud of the way that our humans are evil. The way yeah. that they just... They, they lie in wait and they want to ambush the player and just do, they themselves are doing anything 
it takes for them to survive. And it just comes at the cost of our hero. But it, it's, humans are mean and we're resourceful and we, and we do twisted stuff. And uh, this clothesline is just kind of the beginning of the things they're doing that the players, we, d we never want the player to be, feel complacent when he's riding his bike down the road. You know, there's all kinds of ways for him to be disrupted, knocked off that bike. And it, it's, uh, it's just because we're turning, we're kind of breaking the, what I call the design rules, the conventional design rules and that you don't do that to players. You don't knock them off their bike. You let them, you know, they've earned that. And it's just, it's visceral and it's exciting and thrilling to survive those types of encounters. Yeah, it really is. I think, you know, for me, it's just the way the game looks. So, and when you, when you get a chance to play it the way it plays. So, like I said, we have these super talented um, engineers and artists and designers and the game just looks amazing. We're tr our goal was to create a AAA console quality open world experience because that's not something we had really seen. Uh, and, you know, I think the guys are, are really pulling it off. I mean, I think the characters look amazing. I think the environments look amazing right. all times of day. And it's just, it's just fun to look at. Right. I'm just super excited to find out how the world of Days Gone got to where it is. Yeah. You know, the origin story and how it, it led to these freakers pretty much taking over. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Uh, guys, Days Gone uh, coming out on PS4. You, do you guys have a release time frame yet? We don't, so okay. we're, you know, we're just working really hard to Deep try to make the best yeah. game. You know, we're really happy that Sony's given us the time and resources yeah. to nice. just make like a triple A yep. open world action game. And I, you know, and I think it's going to be awesome. I agree with you. I think it looks fantastic. So thanks for coming by, showing off the latest, that alternate yeah. playthrough. It was very interesting. I didn't realize it could go in so many different directions. But uh, coming up next on PlayStation Live from E3, we've got a lot more. We've got game demos, interviews, all kinds of good stuff. So stay with us. PlayStation.